Hi. I had no idea that there was a time limit on these videos. So part two, because I'm not done talking about my dad. So my dad was respectful. He was respectful. He always honored relationships. He'd call his ex-wife yearly to wish her happy holidays. But he also made sure to respect my mother and always made sure she was a part of that call. In fact, my mother and my dad's ex-wife still have a relationship today and they talk they talk, I talk with her, she's a lovely, lovely lady. He introduced my mother to people from his past if he wanted to still have communications with them to ensure she never had reason to question him. Nothing was a secret in our family. Aside from simply the preparations he was making for our future, right? And that was him protecting us again from stress. My mom's family loved and respected my father. Everyone who knew him looked up to him, including the teams that worked for him. My dad treated everybody with respect, regardless of their status, their race, their job type, their religion, age differences, socioeconomic status differences. My dad did not, however, assume a colorblind you know, perspective or a race-blind perspective or a financial-blind perspective. He saw a difference. He respected and recognized difference. He recognized his own privilege and he got to know people. He got to know their stories. He made everything personal and he got to know people's hearts and humanity. You felt seen around my father. Sacrifice, he sacrificed so much to support my needs, my schooling, my mother's comfort. Um, he actually sent me to the University of Miami when it would have been much cheaper, easier, closer, and easier on his heart if I would have stayed in Virginia, closer to my parents. But my father knew I was painfully shy at the time. My relationship with my mother was topsy-turvy and he felt like this was the best decision for me. So he made the sacrifice. And he sent his, his little girl, because I was daddy's little girl, far away. And it was the biggest gift he could have given me because clearly I broke out of my shell and I owned my space. And my relationship with my mother today is better than it has ever been in my life. And so much of that inspired by what my father wanted for us. And he, again, as I mentioned, he saved for my mother's future for many, many, many years at the expense of his trips, at the expense of his own toys, at the expense of things I'm sure my dad would have loved for himself but he was never short-sighted or selfish about things. My dad left a legacy in small moments, in gestures. We often think we need to involve ourselves in grand gestures to be honored or special or remembered, and that's just not true. Not a day goes by that my mom says she doesn't think of him. She thinks of him when she looks at a teacup, because my dad loved glass, long teacups with a little handle for the finger. He loved it. Um, if we'd go to restaurants and they had nice teacups, like really like solid glass or a steak knife, a really nice steak knife, he asked, can I buy this? Are they for sale? Which made my mom and I just laugh. She was embarrassed a few times over it, but I think it was just charming and adorable. My mom said he loved towels, certain towels in hotels. He would just say like, it just seems to, you know, you know, dry up the water better and absorb the water better. I wonder if they're for sale. And one day she said a box full of towels showed up at the house and he had figured out how to order these hotel towels that he loved. As I mentioned, Aftershave, Halston Cologne, these are in the first video, part one. The songs I've mentioned earlier that my father loved and sang, Roquefort, Blue Cheese. I don't know why he always called it Roquefort, but he always called Blue Cheese Roquefort and he loved Roquefort dressing. French onion soup. I didn't know why I love French onion soup so much. So I asked my mom in preparing for the video, was that a thing that daddy loved? She said, oh yes. And I don't remember those experiences with him consciously, but clearly they're in there. But she said that apparently they went to a French restaurant in France when I was still in her belly. And he had a, an onion soup that he loved, that he never forgot. And then he became he basically got on a search for wonderful French onion soup that was that delicious. He never apparently found it again that was that good. But I wondered why I do that. I do, I go looking everywhere for the best French onion soup. There's a couple places I have found actually. The Keg has amazing French onion soup. City Hall also, City Hall Masters. So that's another thing I'll always think about. Um, oranges, pomegranates, 
grapefruit. My father would order these every year in crates from Florida and other places where they just came fresh and delicious and zesty and a smell. My mom said she thinks of them every time she looks at cabbage and she shared a funny story about that. I think of them every time I think of a Persian breakfast with, with sangak or babati breads and feta cheeses because that's what he loved every morning. Even if we were on vacation, he wanted his Persian breakfast and his tea. He drank four to six glasses of tea a day. And I will never forget the night that my dad made himself tea and I wasn't a tea drinker. And something about that night, I just felt playful. And I was like, daddy, you didn't offer me any tea. And he's like, oh, Anisha, I'm so sorry. You never drink tea. Would you like tea? I'll make you tea. And I was like, no, I just wanted to be offered. And I just remember the playfulness. Like one of the things my dad loved teasing me about was my dog. So. He and my mom loved to try to give her table food because she'd beg and, you know, they didn't want to deprive her and deny her. And I would always say, do not feed her from the table. Like, please, guys, don't. Like, she's a teeny little tummy. I don't know. I don't want her to get sick. And my dad would always say, you're a murderer. Because I wouldn't, I didn't want to give my dog the food. He felt like I was depriving her of goodness in life. So it was just this cute banter we always had. Yogurt soda, another thing I'll never look at the same. Sugar cubes, these were all things you always found in my home that were very unique and awful, often involved jokes with my father. I mentioned to the Twinkies, Doritos, they were a treat. I tell people never look to food or drink as a treat or a reward, but I tell you what, I looked forward to those Doritos. He would hide them and every few months there would be a night where he would pull them out and it was so special. We would have Doritos and we would dip them in plain yogurt with salt, pepper, and lemon juice. I know that sounds very strange, but it was delicious. So I suggest you try it, much healthier than dips. My dad was open-minded. So he was willing to discuss and examine anything before rejecting things. He showed curiosity, he held himself accountable, and he also did his due diligence. So he didn't only rely on what one or two people told him, he would not, however, act or make decisions based on assumption or fear. So it's no wonder why my life is the way that it is and I do so many random things that don't make sense. My father never, I never saw him let himself stop anything due to fear. He was willing to take risks. He rem I remember the stories my mom has told, him, told me is that he started as a valet when he moved to this country in his youth, put himself through uh, Howard University no idea how he ended up at Howard, predominantly a black university. Here he is, a Middle Eastern man, put himself through Howard University, which is one of my favorite parts of my dad's story. Worked in finance and banking at one point, has worked in construction, was a civil engineer for the government. Um, wanted to run a farm at one point. My dad was, as I mentioned, incredible at gardening, incredible at architecture. He built my mother's master bedroom on our first home, again, all by himself. I don't know how the heck he did it. It was like the size of a tiny little home. Um, he almost considered law school near retirement. He considered starting a business in hydroponic tomatoes, which he grew amazing tomatoes, my dad. At one point, he, I remember he was gonna move us to Costa Rica, but then ultimately we moved to Virginia because he ended up starting a business in retirement and he started a carpet store and he started doing contract work installing carpets for a department of the army. Nothing he did fit necessarily or made sense and yet he, everything he touched turned to gold because he believed in himself. And I have talked about that in my skincare business that there is nothing in my life that makes sense when it comes to me being in the skincare world as a business owner and in sales around skincare and products and anti-aging. And yet I believed in myself as the vehicle to success. And here I am four plus years into my business and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made for myself. And I'm a very busy professional in other parts of my life, but my father was a visionary and that is in my blood. I was taught to dream bigger. This whole YouTube channel and my platform is a result of all that. So my skincare business is not a fluke. The fact that I help people from the inside and the out now in my world is not a fluke. It's a product of create, a creative mind. It's a product of recognizing the fear I had when I was offered an opportunity for a business I had no business being in and deciding to confront the fear and giving myself six months to fail. And four years later, I didn't fail. So my father taught me that failure was not an option. We know our worth 
and we know that we can turn anything into a success. It's a matter of what do you define as success. To me, success is not being a millionaire. Success is impacting one life at a time. Success is leaving people feeling good, at least as good as you found them, hopefully better. My father was very discerning. He kept very few close friends and those that he had were deep and meaningful and they were lasting. He was kind to everyone. He followed a value of hospitality very common to the Middle Eastern culture that says that you must welcome even your enemies into your home and treat them as honored guests. He loved life. He would often joke in his later years, tell Israel to come another day, I'm not ready. And for those who don't know, Ezrael is the angel of death in Islam in some Jewish traditions. Relative to similar concepts of such beings, Israel holds a rather benevolent role as the angel of death responsible for transporting the souls of the deceased after death. And so often if my dad was sick or going into surgery, he'd be like, tell Israel to come another day, I'm not ready. And in his final weeks in the hospital after a surgery, he actually said to me, okay, Anish, I'm ready. I'm ready. Tell him, hurry up. He didn't say who he was talking about, but I knew. I knew. And that was another gift that my father gave me. It was a gift of peace. A gift of peace of mind. My father was so inspiring. If I haven't made that clear in now video number two, because I couldn't fit all the reasons in video number one, because of how he carried himself and treated people and thought about the world and himself, people admired my father. They felt inspired by him and it was so hard not to like him. My dad was agenda free. He helped others with no expectations of return. He gave to give. You know, it actually hurts my heart a lot of times when, like I host a lot of events online. I do Nuggets of Wisdom second Wednesday of every month. Anyone is welcome to join us. It's 4.45 to 6 p.m. Arizona time through Zoom. Just send me an email if you'd like to be added to the list. I do a lot of events in my skincare world. I do events with my book and presentations on my book. And it hurts my heart when people think they come to the events or tell me they're coming to support me. I don't want them to come to support me because those events are my way of giving back to support you all for supporting me. So if there's any message I wanna give out, it's please don't do it for me. You've already done so much for me you watching this video is a gift to me. It's a gift of confidence you've given me to have a platform and to speak from it. Come and meet other amazing people. Come and be inspired and realize and remind yourself there is so much good around us. Connect with those people you meet at my events and build relationships, spread the love because every single one of us is responsible for creating a kinder world one memorable moment at a time. That's the premise of my website. That's the premise of my book, Don't Be a Stranger. My dad was family oriented, never disrespected my mother or me as I talked about a lot in video one. His pride in us was clear to everyone. Even when he was upset with us, he protected the integrity of our family. He shared only with us and maybe his one best friend. He was so loyal. There was no boys night out, girls night out. My parents did everything together. They vacationed together. They had dinner together. Everything about my father's life revolved around me and my mom. And I loved it and I wouldn't give back a second of that. And that is what I want to create in my life. And that is what is important to me, is that family and that honoring. So I asked my best friend, as I prepared to kind of wrap up the video, I asked my best friend who never got to meet my father to share what she's learned in just simply listening to me reflect about my father to her. And I wanna share with you what she said, because it's beautiful what she wrote back. Brooke, thank you for sharing this, by the way. Your daddy lives on in you in so many ways. The biggest thing that I know about him is the size of his love. He loved you unconditionally, and his love inspired you then and continues to inspire you now. He believed the best in you and for you and knew of your limitless potential. Your dad inspired you to write a book, to publish a book in his honor. Your dad took a chance on your mom. Turns out it was a big chance and even when faced with obstacles, he knew the value of commitment and loving unconditionally. 
Your mom didn't understand the depths of his love or commitment until he was taken home to heaven. And as you and your mom grow closer in mutual respect and understanding, I think you grow to respect and love your dad more with each passing day, even when you did not think you could possibly love him more. Your dad was a warrior. He was willing to do hard things like bring your mom to a country where she couldn't even speak the language and support you both so well as to not just exist, but to thrive. Your dad set a standard for how you deserve to be treated for how a gentleman can show up in this world. I could not have said that any better. And she ends by saying, I feel like you do a great job of keeping your daddy alive in you every day. And I could not have asked for a better, more beautiful sharing of exactly how I do feel about my father. So I wanna leave you with one of my father's favorite sayings. And interestingly, after I'd already written it, my mother said, oh, by the way, another thing your father said that I loved, and it was the same thing. He would often say, if I was sad, if I was hurt, if I was going through a breakup, if I fell and bruised my knee, if I got in an argument with my mom or with him, he'd say, and what that means is you'll grow up and forget about it. And it's the cutest thing, especially now. In fact, my mom just said it yesterday. She said it about herself. Don't worry, I'll grow up and forget about it. And it is the most beautiful perspective to have in life because so much in life, if we really step back, is it gonna matter in five years? What matters is our relationships. What matters is our belief in ourself. What matters is the life and the love around us. And we, if we just have that perspective, right? So it's a reminder that people may not have intention when hurts happen. Just know when it's worth the fight. Thank you so much. If you hung in there with me through the videos, I'm grateful for what it's worth. I'm simply grateful for having completed this project and for these beautiful reminders of how to keep my father alive in me through you, through the people that I meet every single day. So thank you for joining me and I hope that perhaps you'll join us for Nuggets of Wisdom one day. Bye.